I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to yell at you for two hours to get you to understand what I feel. I was like, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited. Ah, I'm, you know, I'm happy to have you here because, you know, let's, let's just be honest. TikTok, 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 TikTok absolutely wraps you in its hold. And of course, there I was scrolling through my For You page and I see this girl and I'm like, damn, she sounds smart when it comes to dating. So, oh, there's my little in your head. And, and I, so I go over to your page and I'm like flipping around. I'm looking at all your little dating posts and I'm like, oh, she sounds so smart. I have to have her on my podcast. Oh, uh, thank you. That's like shocking to me because I just use TikTok for fun. I just have words. So then I just say words. So, was, and you reached out and I was like, dang. So thank you. I appreciate that a bunch. You're welcome. So, you know, listen, I just dive straight in, straight to the point. How did you get so smart when it comes to dating? <laughs> Probably from um, a lot of trial and error, maybe. Um, I think ultimately, you know, past relationships and situations that I've found myself in, um, I do a lot of self-reflecting because when I don't like a certain situation, I, I want to figure out how I can do better or avoid it. Um, so a lot of a lot of self awareness and self reflecting throughout the years. So what is something that you learned to do better? Like what was something that you were you were doing it like this, and they're like, you know what, that's not really quite working. Let me do it this way now. What was like? What's something that you've shifted over into a different way of behaving? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is I did have a long-term relationship um, a while ago. It was five years and it ended. Um, and to me, to be with someone for five years and it like not turn into a marriage, I wanted to know or I guess figure out on my side how that would happen. How, how could I be with someone for so long and, and what were we missing that it wouldn't have gone further? Um, so for me, I had to reflect on that and then take accountability for the things that I may have either done or not done. And that was a big piece for me because I feel like I got comfortable in that relationship because it was, it was good. It just wasn't deep enough to, to turn into the next thing. And I had to figure out what my role in that was um, and seeing how I can be more aware and how I play a role in my part in relationships so that that doesn't that doesn't happen again right and I mean like the journey to that like part of that is the selection process yes definitely what do you is is there something that went wrong during like would you would you pinpoint what went wrong at the selection process or was it after that um for me I think it was because I haven't, I don't date a ton because I think I'm already very selective with who I'm willing to give up my time for um, and when choosing a partner. So I think after that relationship, I really came to terms with um, who I wanted as a partner, who I see myself with, the things that I want. Um, and then I had another relationship about a year after that, that was probably the furthest that I wanted and it was a big lesson of you can't be naive when you want these things so those two combined is what made me extremely more selective with people I would entertain moving forward because I went from a five-year relationship to a not healthy relationship and was like I, I can't have this and so I learned to be very upfront with my wants, my needs, and my intentions to weed out the men who don't have or want the same things that I do. Yes. I love that you say very upfront because I am all about having that fundamental values conversation right from the get-go. 
Yeah. And, and, and people are so scared that, oh my God, if you, if you tell them you want to get married and you want to have kids, like on the first date, they're going to run. I'm like, who's going to run the guy who wants to get married and wants kids. Like not that exactly. Else. That is the entire point. And I've literally told my friends that like, they're like, you're going to scare men away. And like, that's the point. I'm going to scare away the guys that don't want the same things as me. And then I'll be left with the ones that do. And then I can figure it out with them. Coming at dating as an empowered woman, that's what I'm going to call you as an empowered woman, because <laughs> you're, you're owning yourself, right? You're showing up at dates and you're going, look, this is who I am. Does this jive with you or not? Cause let's not waste any time. So you've changed your approach. You've, 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 you're really coming at this from a fearless place. Are you becoming more and more aware? Like, like, did you notice when you shifted into fearless, how many people around you are so fearfully dating? Yes, yes, absolutely. And that, that was a big thing for me too, because to me, if like, if you still have a lot of like fear and negative emotions coming up, when you have those conversations about the dating world or dating again, to me, it shows that you just have a little bit more internal work that you need to do. Um, because I am, I am not scared to date because I have done my internal work. I know what I'm looking for. I know my boundaries and standards, and I know that I'm not going to tolerate certain things anymore. So I know I will put my foot down when I need to. So dating does not scare me, but I've seen a lot of people who do date that are, you know, they're scared of the dating world. I get it. It's a scary place out there, but ultimately it just tells me that they need to, you know, work to be a little bit more solid within themselves to hopefully avoid situations that they wouldn't want to be in. Do you think your friends are becoming a little bit more fearless because you're rubbing off on them? Uh, yeah, I would say so. And through social media, I have a pretty open um, Instagram and the clients that I work with um, were, were close. So we talk about a lot of stuff and I, I, I do believe that I have made a positive impact in their lives and at least challenge their uh, perspectives and gotten them to think a little bit more openly, uh, which is exactly why I do what I do and why I'm so vocal about things, because I hope to be able to help other women get to the point that I've been because it takes time and it takes work. And I hope to be able to show them that it's possible. So you're infecting them with your fearlessness. I hope so. Yes. That's what I'm trying to do too. Heck yeah. um, so do you know anything about the stuff that I teach? Um, like a little bit. I recently found you. I have two of your books. I'm working through one of them. Um, but I have not known of you very long. Uh, but when I did find your TikTok, I was like, this is one of the few people that I feel is most similar to how I feel about dating because we don't see a lot of that on social media. We see a lot of different things. We see a lot of pickup artist tricks. Yes. Yes. And a lot of single male dating coaches, a lot of single yeah. dating coaches. Um, what do you, what do you think about single dating coaches? Do you have an opinion on that at all? I would to me, I, ha I don't have a, an issue if, if you are single and you are promoting, you know, standards and boundaries and how to set yourself up to be a successful dater or successful partner. Um, but to me, I wouldn't go to someone who hasn't done what I'm trying to do. Um, so I do think that there's a a line there. Like there's a difference in, in being single and promoting how to prepare yourself and being single and promoting. I know how to be in a relationship and how to get through things because they're not in it. You know what I mean? I absolutely do. Like, you know, one thing I say about Matthew Hussey, he's a great confidence coach. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, you're a fitness instructor, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the nuances, you know, the changes that will take place as people progress through the journey and, you know, the adjustments that will need to be made because this is something you've done before. 
Um, right. It's, it, there's yes. something about experiencing something and being able to teach people based on experience because you really get all those little micro aspects of it. Um, and so I look at somebody who's yeah. single saying, I know how to teach you how to have a healthy long-term relationship. And I'm like, but you don't, because you, you just haven't done that. Um, you know, a lot of people come to me as they transition from dating into a relationship, having found somebody who's better than anything they've ever had before. And they hit this place where it's like, oh my God, I'm actually feeling physically uncomfortable because this is so good. How do I deal with this? And that's something I can teach them how to get through because that's a transition I've done. So there's all these little details that sometimes, you know, people who haven't been through the journey don't quite know how to pick up on. Have you heard about my no kissing for three months? Yeah. Day rule? I have. I have heard of it. What do you think about that? I would say, um, so, okay. So it makes a lot of sense. I will say when I first saw that, I was like, what? Like, people can do this. Like, because I am a very physical and intimate person. My love language is physical touch. Um, but when I like looked into it more, like it makes a lot of sense because the aspect of, you know, waiting to see who's serious. And if you're out there dating and trying to find a partner, you want to see who's serious. Um, so it, it makes a lot of sense for people who are actively out there and dating and trying to find the real thing because there's a lot of crap that you have to sift through when dating and that's a perfect way to see who is willing to stick through it or not but I have not yet put that into practice <laughs> <laughs> myself um, but I only recently discovered that so it's not like I've had many opportunities to try it yet. And just to be completely clear, no kissing doesn't mean no touching. It doesn't yeah. mean no affection. Um, yeah. In fact, when I was doing the no kissing for three months dating rule, one of the physical things that happened during this no kissing part was slow dancing in my kitchen, like mm -hmm. impromptu slow dancing, right? Like I was making supper. He put some music on. He came into the kitchen. I went over. I put my arms around him because no kissing doesn't mean no affection. But yeah. affection is something you show when you feel the warm fuzzies, right? Yeah. And so I went over. I put my arms around him and we started slow dancing in my kitchen. So there's a lot of romantic things that can happen because you're being so much more creative with your shows of affection and appreciation. Yes, it, it makes a lot of sense. It does. And it's so sexy. I mean, I agree. Like you just painted a picture and I was like, that's, that's romantic. Like that's, is, that's cute. That's intimate. And it's, it's more than just a kiss. And that's super like empowering for two people to have that moment together. Yeah. I love the idea of building emotional intimacy and connection mm -hmm. before adding the sexual intimacy to that. Yeah. Instead of, you know, let's get sexual and hope everything else falls into place. Exactly. Because you can, you can do that and have no real emotional connection or development um, that way too. And then we all know how it, false feelings can happen when sex is brought into the mix. Um, and if you haven't taken the time to build emotional intimacy or foundation, that's when things get messy. Yes. Yeah. And people are like, why are there so many divorces? I'm like, because a lot of people got together doing the kiss to see where it goes, basically mm -hmm. fooled their emotions, played the hoping game, filled in a bunch of gaps about who the person was, just essentially created information inside their own heads to match the emotions they were feeling. Um, so built that castle in the sky, said, I want my big day, you know, despite fighting and disagreement, because mm, maybe fundamentally this person wasn't quite compatible with them. They're like, listen, put that ring on my finger. Let's get that wedding done. I want to wear the dress. I want to have the big party. And then they have the wedding and, and you know, people are like, Things will get better when we live together. Things will get better when we get married. Things will get better when we have a kid mm -hmm. and they don't at all these stages. And then eventually they go, you know what? It's been eight years. Maybe I should give up now. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you're waiting for a thing to improve a situation, it'll never be a thing. Mm -hmm. And I see that a lot too with um, couples or friends or just, you know, people I know that are like, well, what if we just blank? Right. If you're waiting for a thing, it's, it's never a solution. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we talked about when we were messaging back and forth was, uh, you know, I, I said, if you have any questions about dating, go ahead and bring them and I'll answer them for you. So did you have any questions? Any questions about dating? Um, let's see. I mean, I, I feel like I have tried so hard to like, try to figure this out like on my own as best as I can um, through the dating world. Um, and one thing that I noticed that I was running into was I was starting to question if I was being, not that my standards are too high because I will never tell someone their standards are too high, but I just, I wasn't accepting dates at all. I have a public Instagram and people reach out all the time. Um, and I was starting to wonder if, if I was actually holding myself back because I wasn't taking opportunities or if it was that I was just being patient enough to wait for an opportunity that was at least interesting enough type of thing. Um, and so I was curious what your thoughts on that are, if you feel like um, there's benefits to just more experience, more practice, or if it really is okay to say no, if there's not something kind of drawing you towards that. Yeah. So I think the latter, it's okay to say no, if you're not feeling drawn towards somebody. And the reason why I say that is because I don't want you to go through a burnout. Mm -hmm. If you, if you go, if you say, you know what, um, I'm going to do this because I should be getting more experiences. I should be giving more people opportunities. And then it's fatiguing to say, mm -hmm. thank you time and time again. It takes something out of you to do that because yeah. we're creatures designed to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And every time you say, thanks, no, thanks there's some pain that's happening both within yourself because it sucks to say that and you're creating pain in someone else and you know, you're doing that. So that's additional pain. And, mm -hmm. and so there's, it becomes like a, a painful experience and you might pull back right about the moment where the right one was coming along yes. and, and you're like, no, I'm too tired to go out on this date. And so you might miss out on that opportunity People say, like, I, I, I talk about no kissing for three months all the time. It's my shtick. And I always get people in the comments who are like, oh, we kissed on the first date. We've been together for 10 years. I'm like, I never discount luck or intuition. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, if you're, if do follow your intuition when it comes to responding to people, but also use some intelligence when it comes to responding to people. So you've got guys popping up in your DM. Are they like, hey, you're beautiful that's so minimal. If you're going yeah. to respond to anybody, you want to respond to the person that makes it obvious they're interested in who you are as a human being, not just in how you look. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, because I, I agree. Like, I feel like for me, you know, I have, you know, friends or people around me and we hear it all the time. They're like, if anything, it's a free dinner and I cannot that because I just think it's so disrespectful to that guy who wants to take you out and get to know you. And yes, I know there's an aspect of like, well, you don't know until you don't try. But if you're, if you're really not feeling some type of, you know, pull to be like, I, I could, I could maybe see it. I do not suggest people going out for a free meal because that to me is like, what are your intentions? And like, that is, that's not, that's not nice. That's not right. Um, so when I have people around me saying like, just, you know, put yourself out there more or do this, it's like, they, they start to think that I'm anti-dating when it's, I'm not anti-dating at all. I'm anti-wasting my time. Mm. And I think there's a difference that they don't always see. 
Um, and so when I am public or talking about things that I believe in and telling other women that it's, it's okay to have your standards and it's okay to say no, and you don't have to accept an invite just because a man invited you, like those things are okay. But on the other hand, we have all this other content saying otherwise, and it gets confusing. Um, but I just wish more women would actually take dating more serious or men too, and take it more serious and know like what their actual intentions are. And then I feel like people could avoid some of these unpleasant dating situations more often if they're more intentional. Yeah. I love how you're anti using people as well. Absolutely. Yeah. This is like, for me, the first couple dates are a vibe check. Do I like your energy enough to see you again another time? And I say, nobody should have to pay a lot of money for that. No. Um, and another philosophy that I have is if I don't intend to be reciprocal, I'm not going to let you mow my lawn, shovel my driveway, clean off my car, fix stuff around my house, pay for my dinner. Absolutely. If I don't intend to reciprocate and not just mm -hmm reciprocate but reciprocate your intention if they're doing those things good men will do that they will offer this up because they want to show you i will be a good partner mm -hmm. and if you don't intend to actually see about getting into a relationship with that person do not say yes to those things because it's not fair and then we have all these men who are upset and rightfully so that yep. they've paid for dinner after dinner, after dinner, after dinner, and it doesn't end up going anywhere for them. And so the no kissing for three months dating rule, it, it's hand in hand with don't use men. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, I see it everywhere and I, I hate it because men want to date and find partners too. There's a lot of good guys out there too. Yes. And it's like, they they're doing the things they're they're being direct they're being forward they're taking initiative they're getting your number and they're asking to take you out and then so many women are sitting there being like well it's a free dinner it's a free dinner it's a free dinner it's not free well, what do you expect him. yeah exactly it's not free to him no and then it's not free to the to the you know just just like you don't want to get burnt out and then and then vomit you know any negativity that you've accumulated because you've overextended yourself and you now resent that you don't want to vomit that on the next person it's it's you know women who are taking well let's call them girls selfish short term thinkers right so guys girls selfish short term thinkers men women generous long term thinkers girls who are like it's a free date um, are basically creating a scenario where this good man now gets frustrated and he's vomiting that on somebody who might have been a really good match for him, might have been that generous long term thinking woman that he's looking for, but he's like, fuck these bitches, you know, in a yeah. way. And she's paying the price for other people who've, who've been taking from him. Um, the TikTok that I saw where that brought me over to your page was the one where you're showing a series of text messages and he's like saying so many things and then it's like two word answers mm -hmm. and you're like did you see the energy change it's right there i'm curious so were you kissing that one um yes i did we did. We had, we had not slept together, but we, we had kissed and we had, um, you know, been close. Um, and I honestly, I don't, I don't know if that had anything to do with him and, and that's fine. Cause to me, the reason is irrelevant. Um, but yeah, <laughs> plain and simple, there's different energy and I don't know what you mean. It was right there. <laughs> it, it literally is right there. Um, so I kind of want to delve into your imagination a little bit um, because one of the reasons why I really love that no kissing for three months dating rule is because it basically is heart insurance. Mm -hmm. it, you know, if, if things fall off, it hurts less. Um, yep. The reason why I think it hurts less is because there is a chemical produced in the kiss, phenylethylamine, that's created when lips come together and mix their lip chemicals, creating a third chemical. So his chemicals and her chemical come together, smush together, 
makes a third chemical that's an aphrodisiac, amphetamine, and antidepressant. And that elevates how you feel. And we make a connection to people. When we feel a certain way around people, we say, they make me feel this way. And we mm -hmm. connect that to them. And we tell ourselves, wow, he's so great because I feel this way around them. And then the energy changes <laughs> and then they, yep. it doesn't work out. And there's like a crash from that because we had this high from that chemical. And I liken it like, you know, before you kissed, you had some excitement about him, right? Like waiting for mm -hmm. his sex, waiting for the date. You're still on a chemical high even before you kiss and we'll call that cocaine. And then you add the kiss chemical and we'll call that heroin. And now you're super high. So you go super high and then you crash. Yeah. So let me, that's, that's my theory. Let me ask you this. If you had not been kissing and that energy had changed, would it affected your emotions differently? Um, if I had not kissed at all, I think that be, potentially, I, I do think potentially, um, but also I am huge on facts over feelings, knowing like gathering the data versus what I'm feeling. Um, and because I don't date a ton, then, then I feel like I can have a pretty good grip on the select few men that I do choose to, to date. So potentially it, it could have, um, because I think there was still some excitement built up around that. And me being a physical person, I looked forward to that side that maybe maybe it would have been a little a little different of a, of a scenario but still ultimately the second i saw it i i wasn't gonna ignore it right. he still he still heard it from me right um let me see i, I would I, say in the past though yes um yeah. for sure i think these newer situations i'm finding myself in where i have a really good grip on emotions, facts, feelings, that type of thing, uh, that I am already way more mindful when it comes to the physical side, if I choose to do that. But in the past, absolutely. We've all been there. We're like that first kiss. And then the, the first time you're together and it's like, well, we've come together, we're connected. And you hold on to that more than the fact is, well, it's only been a few weeks. And you've only had a few dates. That's all that it actually means. And a lot of us tend to get wrapped around the feelings versus the facts that are in front of us. So, you know, I, I want to ask you how you stay so grounded. And, and if you have to pull yourself down, like if you find yourself floating up into a cloud and you go, no, 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 no. Let me pull myself back into reality. How do you do that? Um, well, I think for me, because of my last relationship, um, the very toxic one that I found myself in, that, that is what happened is I, I floated because I had been in a five-year relationship healed, um, over a year later, found myself in this one and, or so I thought I healed and, um, I didn't know what to look out for yet. And so I, I floated, I was gone, um. And it was your typical narcissistic gaslighting, future faking, love bombing, all that. But I didn't really know what that was yet. Um, and so after that, it was a very, very intense conversation with myself of you cannot let that happen. Um, so I am always very mindful and very aware so that if I do find myself floating away, I remind myself of the facts every time and to be mindful of that and to know that like, especially when you first start talking to someone, usually it is over um, texting or an app before you meet them. And I've told myself, I, I will not talk to someone that long on a device before I ever see them in person. And to remind myself, I don't know who this person is yet. I might get an idea and I might, like the idea but we don't fall for potential we need to see and collect our information and actually get to know someone and one of the biggest things that I love that you always say is 
we don't get into relationships with people we don't know. Yeah. And I have held on to that. I know I haven't even found your stuff long, but I have held on to that. And that I'm not kidding this, that guy in the TikTok who lasted three weeks, I did have your information before then. I did not practice the no kissing for three months, but everything else, we don't get into relationships with people we don't know. Um, and we are dating to get to know someone. I definitely held that. And I, I remember telling friends like, yes, it's, it's exciting. It feels like it's going somewhere. He's doing all the things because he really was. And I kept saying, but I don't get into relationships with people I don't know. So I'm still dating him. And that, that was a, that was a big piece because too often we float away. Right. And we get so wrapped around the idea of who we think someone is and it is not them at all. Right. Um, Which books did you get by the way? I have, um, after the first kiss and which I'm about halfway through that one and fix your shit, which I have not started. Um, but I will soon once I finish (laughs) the other one, you're going to love it. (laughs) I'm excited. People ask me, which one is my favorite? And I say fix that shit because I was literally fixing the shit while I was writing fix that shit. So there's there's some some special meaning to it um, for me in my heart, because the reason why I'm here doing what I'm doing, why I'm so happy, why there's so much I have to say about relationships and how to really start a great one and keep a great one is, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of that that comes from my relationship with my husband and the lessons that I learned. And he has some isms that I've incorporated into my work, like you can't help who you fall in love with. And, um, I don't want to be with anybody who doesn't want to be with me. So Mm -hmm. I love, I love his wiseness and I love how much I've become wiser as a result of this relationship and the evolving that I've had to do as a result of the relationship, I've had to become a much more mature person. So that was, that was pretty good for me. (laughs) I definitely had some growing up to do when it came to choosing relationships because my pattern was all about choosing the wrong ones. Yep. Taylor, I'm really happy we had this conversation. Me too. This was so exciting. This was fun. Yeah. I'd love to do this again sometime. So let's see how this journey evolves. Um, Mm -hmm. If you, if you hit a point in your relationship and, and you're like, Hey, like I'm kind of at a sticky moment here and I'm sort of wondering how to navigate it. Send me a message, go, Hey, this is Taylor. We did the podcast. Um, can we talk about this? And I'd love to have you back so we can explore this. I love how articulate you are. You're amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that so much because I just, I have words to share that just come from my own experience. And I just hope to show women and men. I just speak a lot to women because I train women um, that this is, this is possible. And if people are telling you your standards are too high, I want them to be the reason that shows them that it's in fact that theirs are too low and I just want to be that example um, and to show people that doing the work and being patient will lead you to where you ultimately want to be and if you ultimately want to be in one place you have to do the work to get there and you can't keep doing the same old stuff so uh, I just I just like to empower women especially but people in general to just challenge their perspective and get them thinking a little bit more. And it doesn't mean that I'm telling people that they're right or wrong. I just want them to think more for themselves and see if there's something that they can do differently that helps them evolve and ultimately gets them to where they want to be. You are so awesome. Um, I want more people to find you. So, so tell everybody who's listening where they can find you. Um, my Instagram I'm most active on is just my name, Taylor Farron. And then my TikTok is also Taylor Farron. And, um, that's probably what I use the most and probably easiest to get a hold of me through Instagram. If people ever did need to, I am, I am public and I do try as best as I can to, um, engage and be a support to people. I, I'm not that person that doesn't check my DMs or won't respond. I, I try to, to have conversations with anyone who's willing to have a conversation with me, uh, because I do value the social aspect Mm. of social media. 
Yeah. How do you spell your last name? F like Frank, E-R-R-I-N. Awesome. And by the way, everybody, it's Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R. Yeah. Thank you, Taylor. I really appreciate you. How Thank you. I appreciate you so much. This is a lot of fun. I know. It's girl power, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Make sure you have an amazing day, my love. I'll talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.